What barriers have kept you from experiencing the love of God? This morning, we are starting a brand new series called Beloved, and we'll be talking specifically today about what barriers may exist that have kept us from being able to experience God's love most fully. Well, welcome. It is so good to be with you today on a recap. My name is Hope. I serve as one of the pastors here, and we put together this recap so that wherever you are, you can have a moment in your week to be able to worship with us. So whether you are folding laundry or out and about doing errands, we hope that you can rest in this time to be able to worship our God together. In worship this morning, we had our youth. They were leading us all morning long, both our contemporary and traditional services. So shout out to them for always leading us so well. Right now, we also are getting ready to host a bunch of people on our campus for fall festival. So we hope to get to see you for that as well. And next Sunday, if you're looking for a place to be able to connect with us, be able to meet in smaller settings, then we have an event called Talk About a Game Night that is designed just for you. It'll be at 6 p.m. on Sunday, and you can let us know you're coming ahead of time, fbumc.org slash taco23. And as always, if you'd like to connect with us or have a question, feel free to text hello to the number at the bottom of your screen, and we'd be more than happy to send a connect card your way or answer any questions that you might have. As always, you can find all kinds of things about upcoming events on our website, register for tacos, or find out a little bit more about Fall Festival. And while you're on our website, in the top right-hand corner, you can see our Give button. And if you regularly worship with us and would like to give to support the mission and ministry of our church, then you can do online giving right there. If you've been with us for the last month or so, you may also know we've been in a season of generosity and kind of looking forward to 2024 and planning financially for that. And last week, we kind of wrapped up all of our generosity work. And today, we actually are going to have John Ferris, who is our finance chair, share a little bit more about the work ahead of the finance team and kind of catch us up on the work that they've been doing for the last week or so, as a lot of our estimates of giving have been coming in. And that planning work is just now beginning for next year. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to John to share a little bit more. Hello, my name is John Ferris, and on behalf of the Finance Committee, I would like to thank everyone for their generosity to our church. Serving as the chair of the Finance Committee for the past two years, it's been an honor to see all of God's work being done in our day-to-day ministries and the progress we are making on the R3 campaign. Today, I want to thank the 162 households who have already completed their estimate of giving for next year. Having an accurate estimate of giving helps us create a budget that reflects all the things we know God is calling us to do. We especially want to celebrate that 53 new and or re-engaged households have made a commitment for 2024. That's incredible news. It's exciting to welcome all of the new individuals and families arriving at Favumsi who are ready to get involved and invested in our ministries. I also want to say how grateful we are for those who have continued or increased their giving in recent years so that our mission and ministries can grow each year. One of the reasons our church is in a strong position today is because of the long history of wise stewardship and planning by our leaders and ministry teams. Our finance committee hopes to continue that trend as we work on creating next year's budget. Back in 2020, we were in our strongest financial position in recent years. As a frame of reference, that year we had 263 households submit estimates of giving cards to help our congregation begin living in the new vision as a hub of Wesleyan discipleship and mission We would love to see that many participate again in 24. If you might be one of the hundred to help us close that gap, please take a moment this morning to complete an estimate of giving card or submit your pledge online this week at fvumc.org backslash give 2024. Your response is greatly appreciated. With God's help, we're going to make great things happen. I hope you have a blessed day and thank you for your dedication to Favumsi's mission and ministries. Come to the table, he will 
feel satisfied Taste of his goodness Find what you're looking for Oh yes For God so loved The world that he gave us His one and only Son to save us Whoever believes in him Will live forever Well, hello, friends. We are starting a brand new sermon series today called Beloved. And in this series, we'll be exploring both our identity as beloved children of God, and we'll be inviting one another to open ourselves up to be loved by God in a brand new way. Um, I trust that most of us at some point in our lives have heard that we are loved by God. Maybe you grew up singing the song, Jesus Loves You, This I Know. Or maybe someone somewhere along the way made sure you knew that God loved you. Or, or maybe you are hearing it for the first time today. But throughout the series, we'll be asking the question, what would our lives look like if we really lived like we believed and trusted in the truth that uh, God loves us so deeply? Today we'll be talking about the expansiveness of the love of God and some barriers that keep us from experiencing um, God's love for us in our own belovedness. Uh, we'll begin by looking at Ephesians chapter 4, which paints a beautiful picture of Paul's hopes for his community's imagination for God. He writes, I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all of the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge so that you may be filled with the fullness of God. In this scripture, Paul acknowledges the love of Christ isn't something that we can simply come to know through knowledge alone, but rather the love of God surpasses all knowledge. I wonder if you've experienced the love of God that surpasses all knowledge. When was the last time that you experienced an encounter with God's love that was beyond simply knowing or learning about God? I actually want us to pause for a second and to think about that question. It was the last time you experienced an encounter with God's love that was beyond just knowing. When did you experience this love? Where were you when you had this experience? I also wonder, were there barriers that normally exist for you that somehow were broken down so that you could experience God's love in a new way? Maybe your last experience of God's love was just a couple minutes ago as we were singing together. Maybe it's been weeks or even years since you feel like you had an encounter with God. I tend to think that we primarily engage God through knowing or learning. But I appreciate the ways that in our scripture, Paul is not saying, may you learn about the depth of the love of God and all right, good luck. You got this. But rather, Paul acknowledges that we need the power of the Holy Spirit to comprehend the breadth and length and height and depth of the fullness of God. Now, I realize that there also are a ton of barriers to us experiencing God. But one that I find particularly challenging is that sometimes our primary or inherited images of God limit our imagination of who God is. Now, this feels super important, so I want to say it one more time. Sometimes our primary or inherited images of God limit our imagination of who God is. If we have a limited imagination of who God is, then we also have a diminished capacity to experience the fullness of God's love. If we only believe that God is a distant deity that made the world and then stepped back and has no desire to interact with us, then we likely won't seek after God's nearness we likely won't get to experience that our God is a God who didn't create at one place at one time, but that our God is regularly still creating all around us. If we primarily imagine God as a judge, then we will likely try to hide all of the non-shiny parts of our lives from our loving creator. 
And in doing so, we might miss out on experiencing the grace that God so abundantly has for us. If we primarily imagine God as a gatekeeper, then we will likely interface with God through a posture of fear rather than of getting to delight in God's persistent love for us, a kind of love that crosses all boundaries such that we might always have a seat at God's table. Friends, sometimes our imagination for who God is is too narrow and therefore becomes a barrier for us to be able to access God's love in new ways. And as I have considered kind of more expansive images of God, that has helped me to access God's love in new ways across different seasons of my life. Uh, In fact, one of my favorite children's books is written by a woman named Rachel Held Evans and Matthew Paul Turner called What is God Like? And here's the the cover of the book if you want to see it. Uh, Maybe this is a book you have seen before or even read to your kids, but I love the way that they begin this book because they begin by asking questions like, what is God like? They say this is a very big question that people from places all around the world have wondered about since the beginning of time. While nobody has seen all of God because God is too big for any of us to fully see, we can know what God is like. And then it goes on to share a ton of different images of God, from God as shepherd uh, who cares for God's flock, to God as the fire that we might see in um, our fireplace at home or in the brightness of a candle. They talk about how we might see and experience God like the wind in the breeze. They describe God as an artist a brilliant creator and the best kind of friend, images that we all see all throughout scripture. And there are so many things that I really love about this book, but perhaps the thing that I love most of all is that anytime I read it or anytime I get to share it with um, kids out at summer camp or our VBS kids here or any other time, I find that it always reawakens in me an awe and wonder of the vastness of our God and the multiplicity of ways that we can experience God wherever we are. It reminds me that we can also spend the fullness of our lives rediscovering and re-meeting new and delightful images of God in ways that we have not imagined before. I hope that maybe you already have a long list of images of God that you are rediscovering and re-meeting and delighting in. If you don't yet, then I'd also encourage you to spend some time exploring what images of God or metaphors for God that you resonate with most. Maybe you pick up a children's book like this one or throughout the pages of scripture, see different metaphors that are used to show us a little bit more about who our God is. As I think about how God has grown my imagination for who God is and therefore helped me to access the love of God more fully, there are a few images that come to mind that have been really meaningful to me, particularly in this season. So I'll share a couple of those with you. One image that I regularly cling to is the image of God as a gardener. We see from the very first pages of scripture to the last that God is always using plants in the land to teach us about who God is and how we are connected to God. If you were here last week, we even talked about how um, Mary, who is looking for Jesus's body, um, mistakes Jesus for a gardener. We often encounter God. I often encounter God in the garden. The more times that I have found myself um, spending, or the more times, more time that I've spent in the garden, there we go, uh, the more time I see God as a wise gardener who tends and cares for us with the utmost kind of hospitality, working always to cultivate life and flourishing in the world around us. Another way my imagination for who God is has been stretched is by rediscovering God as a loving parent. This has been a really fun season for me to get so many of my friends become parents. And as I've witnessed my friends give of their very bodies around the clock to nourish and sustain their child's life, I've been able to see more fully the care and the great sacrifice of Jesus who gave his very body and blood so that we might be able to have access to the source of all life. And lastly, the longer that I've been in ministry, the more that I've seen the wounded body of Jesus as central to my faith. We all live in fragile bodies, and our bodies and our wounds tell the story of what we have journeyed through. 
And as I consider Jesus' wounded body, I find comfort in the fact that our God isn't so far removed from our own pain and suffering, but that our God knows what it is to be fragile and to be human. All of these images help break down barriers for me that have kept me from receiving the love of God most fully because they remind me that the love of God most fully isn't just about knowing God, but it's also about experiencing God through the world around me. If I believe that God only created in the beginning of time, then I will miss God in the delight of the first summer tomato or the mesmerizing dance of a bee swarm in the spring or in the quiet work of composting as the soil makes room for my decaying eggshells and my coffee grounds to be broken down and transformed into rich and nourishing soil such that the soil will be ready to nurture the next season's crop and to make room for new life. If my imagination for God was too small to see God as a gardener, then I might have missed that the soil is a place of resurrection as it so hospitably takes dead and decaying things and makes room for life to come out of death. If I believe that God is only a strict parent waiting for me to do something wrong so that I can be punished, then I will pray very different prayers than if I believe that our God is tending to us like a loving parent, waking up in the restless hours of the night to make sure that we are fed, loved, held, and cared for. If I believe that God is so unfamiliar to my own experiences of living in a body, then I will worship and lament really differently than if I believe that part of what it is to know God is to know that our God took on flesh to dwell in a body and Jesus knew what it was like for his days to be numbered even at the young age of 33. Friends, my hope for us collectively is that we will not simply know that God loves us, but in the words of Paul, my prayer for us is that you may be able to have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge, so that you may be filled with the fullness of our God. Friends, let us pray. Holy God, you are a God that surpasses all knowledge. You are a God that has promised to meet us again and again. And too often, I confess that my own imagination of who you are and where I might be able to meet you at work in the world are too limited to get to experience you in every moment. So this morning, I ask that you would remind me, that you would remind each of us from wherever it is that we are worshiping today, that you are a God who meets us in the multiplicity of images, from the beauty of the eagle's wings to the freshness of the wind, to rushing water, You are a God who meets us in the garden, in the soil, and as new life is created. You are a God who meets us as a loving parent, tending and nurturing and caring for us. You are a God who knows what it is to live in a fragile body. Lord, I don't know what other barriers we might be feeling or sensing today that have kept us from your love maybe in this moment, maybe in years or in seasons past. God, I ask that you would work to break down whatever barriers that we are facing so that we might be able to experience the fullness of your love for us day after day. You are a God who meets us. You are a God who delights in us. May I ask this morning or today, wherever we are worshiping from, you might remind us that you are a God who calls each and every one of us beloved. You call us your children who are loved so deeply. So this morning, remind us that we are loved, we are loved, we are loved, we are loved by the most high God. And I ask all of this in the strong name of your son, Jesus. Amen.
Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. If my story isn't over, my story's just begun. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. shame at the door cause it ain't welcome anymore Ooh, you're in the Father's house oh yes oh the Father's house come on home come on home prodigals come find hope. Love is on the move when the Father's in the room. Prison doors swing wide, the dead come to life. Love is on the move when the Father's in the room. Ooh, lay your burden. shame at the door cause it ain't welcome anymore Ooh, you're in the father's house check your shame at the door cause it ain't welcome anymore Ooh, you're in the father's house Friends, may the love of our God break through in lots of different places in your life so that you might be able to experience the love of God more fully. May you go in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.